Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to our weekly places in news. In this session, we are going to talk about the important places and locations that were in news over the last one week. That is between the 20th of June and the 26th of June. This series is designed to help improve your map reading skills that can be very important for both your prelims and as well as for your mains. So if you're benefiting from this initiative, do let us know by pressing the like button, share your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So let's start with the first place that was in news, and we are going to talk about the Padma Bridge. But first, the context. The Padma Bridge in Bangladesh was in news because it was inaugurated last week by the government of Bangladesh. This bridge happens to be a strategic bridge and it brings Bangladesh closer to India. It is said to reduce the travel time and distance between Kolkata and Dhaka. That is why the Padma Bridge is strategically and economically very, very important. It also brings the people of India and Bangladesh closer and promotes the historical, cultural, civilizational ties between the two countries. So let's take a question related to this topic and also understand the transport connectivity projects involving India and Bangladesh. The question says, consider the following statements with regard to Padma Bridge. The first statement says, it is a multi-purpose road rail bridge built across the Padma River. It is the longest bridge in Bangladesh. It was entirely financed and built by India. Now, before we answer the question and before we evaluate whether these given statements are correct or not, Let's take a look at the map of India and Bangladesh. See, India happens to share a very long land boundary and a maritime boundary with Bangladesh. You can clearly see that in the map over here. In fact, India's longest land border happens to be with Bangladesh. The land boundary between the two countries runs to nearly 4,097 kilometers. This makes it the longest land boundary for India. There are many transboundary rivers as well. We share many riverine systems. More than 50 rivers flow between India and Bangladesh. So considering the historical ties we have, the civilizational, cultural relations that we have with Bangladesh, it's very important to focus on connectivity. Also, Bangladesh can help us provide alternative routes and alternative access to the northeast of India, which is generally cut off from mainland India. I hope you know that Northeast of India faces a challenge, especially with regard to transportation and connectivity. Northeastern states, they have a big obstacle. This is in the form of the Siliguri Corridor, which you can see over here. The Siliguri Corridor is a narrow land corridor present in West Bengal near Darjeeling. It is hardly around 40 to 60 kilometers in width. It is sandwiched between two international borders, that is between the borders of Nepal and Bangladesh. This narrow land corridor is the only connection that mainland India has with northeast of India. So that is why it is a strategic choke point and it is also referred to as the chicken's neck of India because it is as vulnerable and weak as that of a neck of a chicken, right? So in this context, it's very important for India to seek out alternative routes to northeastern states. We want to expand infrastructure projects, have new connectivity routes with northeast of India. And for all this, Bangladesh is crucial. Bangladesh is critical because if Bangladesh provides transit access via its roads, railway network and inland navigation, then we can reach out to northeast of India. In fact, we have many transboundary rivers, as I was mentioning. We have the Ganga River that flows down into Bangladesh, where it is known as the Padma. This is the Padma River, which is referred to in the question. Then you have the Tista River that flows down from Sikkim and flows through West Bengal and then enters Bangladesh. The Tista is a, a lifeline for West Bengal and as well as for Bangladesh. Then you have the mighty Brahmaputra that flows down from the Northeast and drains into Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, the Brahmaputra gets a different name and it is referred to as the Jamuna. Then from Northeast of India, there are a few major rivers that flow into Bangladesh. We have rivers like the Barak. We also have the Feni River. So eventually, all these rivers that flow from India to Bangladesh, they merge to form one mega river system. That is the Meghna River system before it eventually drains into the Bay of Bengal. 
So India is seeking inland navigation projects to link our waterways so that we can transport goods and even people from mainland India to northeast of India via the rivers of Bangladesh. Similarly, we are connecting our road networks and railway lines to promote connectivity and economic activities. Many integrated check posts have been set up or ICPs along the land borders between India and Bangladesh. These ICPs, they facilitate trade. For example, we have one ICP with Pakistan at the Vaga Atari border. So similarly with Bangladesh, many ICPs have been set up at Petropole, which you can see over here in West Bengal. The Petropole ICP, which is a land port, it happens to be one of the largest land border check posts in Asia. Similarly, in Agartala, that is in Tripura, near Agartala, you have a place called Akura, where you have one more ICP, integrated check post, to promote trade and connectivity between Tripura and Bangladesh. There's one in Assam as well, at a place known as Sutarkandi. Then in Meghalaya, at a place known as Davki, there is one more ICP. So these land check posts or these land ports known as ICPs or integrated check posts, they facilitate the free movement and the easy flow of goods and people. So to promote these economic and cultural relations, we need to interlink our roads, railway lines and inland navigation projects. So that is why connectivity with Bangladesh is crucial and the Padma Bridge is an example for this. The Padma Bridge, which you can see in this image over here, it has been built over the Padma River, the mighty Padma River, which is nothing but the Ganga River, which is known as the Padma in Bangladesh. The Padma Bridge cuts down the travel time and distance between Kolkata and Dhaka. This is a multi-purpose bridge, meaning it has a roadway on top of it, as you can see in the image. It is more than six kilometers in length. And below, there is also a railway track which serves as a railway link as well. So this reduces the travel distance and travel time between Kolkata and Dhaka and reduces the time taken for the Maitri Express, which is an important railway link between India and Bangladesh. So that is why the Padma Bridge built over the Padma River is so significant. It also happens to be the longest bridge of Bangladesh. So last week, the strategic bridge was inaugurated. But however, this project has not been financed by India. It has not been built by India. Bangladesh has arranged its own finances. It has been built by a Chinese company. So there were reports that this project is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. However, Bangladesh has dismissed these reports because Bangladesh has funded this project on its own through its domestic sources. Initially, it was seeking funding from the World Bank. But that initiative got involved in a controversy or a corruption scandal. And later, Bangladesh went on its own and raised funds through its domestic sources. Only the contract to build the bridge was handed to a Chinese company. So Bangladesh has denied any links with Belt and Road Initiative. But the important thing is that this bridge brings Dhaka closer to Kolkata. It's very crucial for connectivity and cultural relations and as well as for economic relations between the two countries. So in this context, you need to understand the various railway lines that we are connecting with Bangladesh. From West Bengal, from Tripura, from Assam and Meghalaya, and along the Siliguri Corridor. All around Bangladesh, there are railway lines that are being set up by India and Bangladesh jointly. The idea is to bring the countries together and integrate their economies. Bangladesh has a vision to be a part of the Trans-Asian Railway Network, which will connect many South Asian countries with Southeast Asian countries along with China. This Trans-Asian Railway Network will bring Bangladesh closer to India, Nepal, Myanmar, China, and other Southeast Asian countries. So the Padma Bridge will play a significant role in realizing the Trans-Asian Railway Network because it brings India closer to Bangladesh and cuts down the travel distance and travel time for the Maitri Express and other railway lines that are going to be set up between the two countries. So with this understanding, now we can easily answer the given question. If you go back and look at the statements, we can say that only the first two statements are correct, whereas the third statement is incorrect. So the right answer is option C, one and two only. Now let's move on to the second place that was in news. And we are going to talk about the location of a country known as El Salvador. But what is the context? Why was El Salvador in news? 
in the last few weeks, you might have heard that prices of cryptocurrencies have crashed. There has been a dramatic crash in the prices of all major cryptocurrencies, including the Bitcoin. Now, how is Bitcoin connected to El Salvador? It is connected because last year, in September 2021, El Salvador became the first country in the world to officially adopt Bitcoin as its official currency. So now the crash in its prices has had an impact on the economy of El Salvador. So last week, there were many articles with regard to this development. So let's understand where El Salvador is located with the help of a question and a map. The question says, El Salvador, the first country to adopt Bitcoin as official currency, is located in which region? Is it located in South America or Central America or the Caribbean islands or in the Pacific islands? Let me show you a map and help you understand where exactly El Salvador is located. In this map, you can clearly see that this is where El Salvador is located. It is a small country in Central America. Central America is a region that is sandwiched between North America and South America. Is that clear? This country, El Salvador, it is surrounded by other Central American countries like Guatemala over here. And you also have other Central American countries like Honduras, which has borders with El Salvador. The other Central American countries include Belize, Nicaragua, Costa Rica and Panama. I'm sure many of you will recognize Panama. Panama is very crucial as it links North and Central America with South America. Moreover, it's a very thin, narrow country. And this is where the Panama Canal has been built. The strategic Panama Canal that links the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean. Without the Panama Canal, boats and ships, they have to circumnavigate all across South America to reach the Pacific. So just like the Suez Canal has cut the travel time between Europe and Asia, similarly, Panama Canal has cut the travel time and it links Atlantic Ocean with Pacific Ocean through a direct route. Other important locations here include the Gulf of Mexico that borders the North American country of Mexico and United States. You also see the Florida coast over here, which is very vulnerable to cyclonic activity. And cyclones here are referred to as hurricanes. You also see a few other countries in the Caribbean region, which is part of the Caribbean Sea. And you have countries like Cuba and many other Caribbean nations. Right? So please be familiar with the geography of Central America and the Caribbean region. Please be aware of the location of El Salvador, the neighboring countries, and as well as Panama and the Panama Canal. So with this understanding, we can easily answer the given question. The correct answer is option B. El Salvador, the first country to adopt Bitcoin as official currency, is located in Central America. Now let's move on to the next location, the third location that was in news. We're going to talk about Russia and Europe. But why? Why was Russia in news? Of course, because of the Russia-Ukraine war. And the exact context is that a few European countries, especially a few Baltic states like Lithuania, they have imposed a few restrictions and curbs on Russia's exclave. Exclave is basically a territory of a country that is located outside of the country and it is entirely surrounded by other countries. So Russia has one such exclave in East Europe and a Baltic nation, that is Lithuania, has curbed rail traffic and connectivity and travel with this Russian exclave. Lithuania has joined other European countries to punish Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. So Lithuania took this decision last week and that is why this Russian exclave was in news. So let's understand more about this with the help of this question. The question says, Russia has an exclave in East Europe and it is known as Sochi, Mariupol, Kaliningrad or Vladivostok. All the places mentioned here, they are very important. They have been constantly in news. But first, let me give you the correct answer before we proceed into the discussion. The correct answer for the question is option C. The Russian exclave in East Europe is Kaliningrad. Now, you need to understand where exactly is this exclave located? Why is it significant? And why are the other places mentioned here? Why are they important? Why Sochi is important? Where is it located? How about Mariupol and Vladivostok? All these places are very, very crucial. So let's take up these places one by one. First, we are going to talk about Kaliningrad, 
the Russian exclave located in East Europe. In this map, you can see that this is where Kaliningrad is located. It's a small Russian exclave. It's a Russian territory surrounded entirely by Poland and Lithuania. Is that clear? It faces the Baltic Sea. It opens towards the Baltic Sea. Since the end of the Second World War, Soviet Union has controlled this territory. It has had sovereignty and jurisdiction over Kaliningrad. Even after Soviet Union disintegrated, Russia retained sovereignty over this territory. So this happens to be a Russian exclave surrounded by East European countries, that is Poland and Lithuania. This place is strategically very, very important for Russia because it faces the Baltic Sea. At Kaliningrad, there is a port. This is the only Russian port which is ice-free during winters that connects and opens towards the Baltic Sea. Through this, Russia can access the Baltic Sea and the North Sea and further it can access the Atlantic Ocean as well. Because the other Russian ports, they usually get frozen during winters. So that is why Kaliningrad is strategically very, very crucial for Russia. So Lithuania has placed travel curbs and restricted rail movement to this Russian exclave. And that is why this jurisdiction was in news. So now you need to understand where the other locations are present. You need to know where is Sochi, where is Mariupol, where is Vladivostok and why are they important. Vladivostok is located far away. It's located in eastern Russia over here, facing the Sea of Japan. Vladivostok is an important port city again. It's part of the Russian Far East region. It's part of the, the Siberian region where Russia has plenty of natural resources. Here the weather is very extreme. Russia is seeking investments into its Far East region to exploit its resources. And India has actually made investments in the Russian Far East. India even has a consulate at Vladivostok. We are seeking a new maritime route with Russia to connect Chennai, the port of Chennai, with the port of Vladivostok. Is that clear? So that is why Vladivostok is an important location. Recently, Vladivostok was again in news because of the Ukraine war. Many children, refugees and others who were trapped in the conflict, they have been forcefully transported by Russia from a place known as Mariupol to Vladivostok. So human right violation allegations were brought up against Russia because of this development. Mariupol, which we have been mentioning in this context, is located in Ukraine. We have discussed Mariupol in a previous session as well. It's located in eastern Ukraine, right below the Donbass region, right below Donetsk and Luhansk, which are the separatist hit areas. In the Donbass region is where Russia is sponsoring a separatist war against Ukraine. In the recent war, Russia has primarily targeted Mariupol because it is a strategic port. Mariupol faces the Sea of Azov over here and from the Crimean Peninsula, which Russia annexed in 2014, it has been pounding and targeting Mariupol and almost the entire city, the port city has been decimated. That is why Mariupol was in news. So from this conflict zone, thousands of children and other refugees were forcefully transported by Russia and it has been alleged that Russia has transported them to Vladivostok where there are very harsh conditions. As a result, Allegations have been brought up against Russia, alleging that Russia has committed war crimes and human rights violations. Then finally, the last place which was mentioned, Sochi. Sochi is important because it faces the Black Sea. It is a resort town in Russia located over here, very close to Mariupol. It's right next to another country known as Georgia. Russia and Georgia have also fought a war a few years back. Sochi in particular is very important. Because it is a place where Russia often organizes many important conferences and summits. It has even organized many big sporting events at Sochi. Summits of BRICS, SCO, etc. They've all taken place at Sochi. So it's an important resort. It's a resort destination, a coastal destination. And it has significance in diplomacy and international relations. Because Russia hosts many big events, many conferences over here. So with this understanding, we can easily answer the question. The correct answer is Kaliningrad. That is the Russian exclave located in East Europe. So option C is clearly the right answer. Now let's move on to the fourth place that was in news. And we are going to talk about the coral reefs and their locations in India. We have picked this topic for discussion because last week it was reported that four new species of corals have been discovered in Indian waters. This is quite a unique development. 
Because generally, India is not known for its coral structures. India has a very limited presence of coral reefs. I hope you know the significance of coral reefs. Coral reefs play a significant role in marine biodiversity. In fact, they are even referred to as the rainforests of seas and oceans. Coral reefs are given this title because they have a very rich biodiversity and they play a key role in the marine food chain. So recently, four new species of corals have been discovered in Indian waters. Hence, it's very, very important for your prelims to know the presence of coral structures in Indian waters. The question says, where in India can you find major concentration of coral reefs? Is it at the Andaman Nicobar Islands or at the Lakshadweep Islands or at Gulf of Manar, Gulf of Kutch or Park Strait? Let me show you a map which will help you understand the presence of coral structures in India. As you know, India has a long coastline. The coastline is close to 7,500 kilometers, right? We have a coastline on mainland India. We also have island territories. That is the Andaman Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Islands. Along this coastline, there are few places where major presence of coral reefs is noted. This includes the Andaman Nicobar Islands, the Lakshadweep Islands, Gulf of Manar Park Strait region between India and Sri Lanka, and as well as the Gulf of Kutch region in the Arabian Sea near Gujarat. These are the places where major concentration of coral reefs is reported. Apart from this, there are few minor coral reefs in other places. For example, in the Malwan region along the Konkan belt of Maharashtra and Goa in the Ratnagiri belt. There you have a minor presence of coral structures. Even in Karnataka, in the Mangalore, Udupi, Gokarna belt, there is a minor presence of coral reefs. Then uh, in Kerala, along the Kolam region, even there you find a minor presence of corals and also in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. But these are all minor structures. The major concentration is seen in Andaman Nicobar, Gulf of Manar Park Strait, Lakshadweep and Gulf of Kutch. Now this is where I want you to take up an exercise. Please read about the different types of coral structures, whether is it a fringing reef or barrier reef or atolls. So read about these different coral formations, identify which of them are present in India and where and post that information in the comments so that it will help other students as well. So now, if you go back to the question, we can easily say that we can find major concentration of corals in all the listed places, in all the five places. So option D is definitely the correct answer. So with this, let's move to the last place that was in news and we are going to take a look at the Caribbean region. That is why when we discussed El Salvador and Central America, I did not mention the Caribbean countries. The Caribbean countries were in news and the region was in news because of a meeting of a regional grouping that took place last week. There is a regional grouping of Latin American countries and Caribbean nations known as CELAC. It stands for Community of Latin American Countries and Caribbean Nations. So basically, this regional grouping includes many important countries from South America, Central America. It also includes Mexico from North America and it includes many Caribbean nations. They're all part of this important regional grouping and they work together to promote economic and cultural cooperation amongst the member countries. They also use the CELAC platform to counter the dominance of the United States in the region. So that is why the CELAC, the community of Latin American and Caribbean nations is a very important grouping. So recently it was in news. It did provide some statements on the Russia-Ukraine war and also regarding the recent G7 summit that was taking place. It was in this context that the regional grouping was mentioned and hence you should know about the Caribbean region. The question says, which amongst the following is not present in the Caribbean region? See, the Caribbean region is made up of many independent sovereign nations. There are few territories and regions which are owned by other countries. For example, even today, there are few European powers like UK, France, Netherlands, which still have jurisdiction over these Caribbean territories. These are their foreign territories. Because see, please understand in the Caribbean region, in Latin America region, the European powers had established their colonies. Spain, Portugal, UK, France, Netherlands, they all had their colonies in Latin America, Central America and in the Caribbean region. Even though many regions were granted independence, they became independent sovereign countries. 
there are still some foreign territories held by the European powers. So in this context, you should know about the major territories and countries that are present in the Caribbean region. In the options, we have Barbados, Cayman Islands, Comoros, St. Kitts and Nevis. The only way we can answer this is by looking at the map of the Caribbean region. As you saw earlier, the Caribbean region is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, there is Central America and North America, there is also South America, right? This is where the Caribbean region is located. The major territories, countries and jurisdictions here include the communist country of Cuba that's located close to the United States, very close to Florida. US and Cuba have a long-standing geopolitical rivalry since the Cold War days. Then you can also see the Cayman Islands over here, which belongs to the jurisdiction of United Kingdom. You might have frequently heard about Cayman Islands. It is a tax haven. It is often used for money laundering. So that is why the Cayman Islands is frequently in use. You can also see Bahamas, a popular tourist destination, and again, a low tax jurisdiction, which is often misused for money laundering. Then you see Turks and Caicos Islands belonging to UK. There's Jamaica, the small country of Haiti over here, which was recently hit by a major earthquake. Then you have the Dominican Republic, British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Barbuda. Then we also have St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago. All these are Caribbean nations. Some are independent. Some are independent sovereign nations. Some of them are still under the jurisdiction of European powers. In fact, if you observe, you can even notice a few small territories that belong to France, Netherlands and the other countries. So the Caribbean countries and the regions here, they are very, very important for India as well. India shares very close cultural relations with these countries. If you ask why, it's all because of the colonial system, the colonial rule. The British, they practiced a form of labor known as indentured labor. When slavery was abolished, the British enterprises, the British companies like East India Company, they came out with a new form of exploitative labor system to replace African slavery. In early 1800s, the British Parliament outlawed slavery. So to find cheap labor, they started exploiting Indians. So Indians were transported to many British colonies under an exploitative bonded labor system known as indentured labor system. Today, if you find a strong Indian community in many countries around the world, it's all because of the indentured labor system. I'm sure you would have noticed that there is a strong Indian cultural influence in West Indies. If you just look at the West Indies cricket team, their names, right? You will notice that there is a strong Indian influence. The language they speak, the names, the food, clothing and culture, there is a strong Indian influence. In fact, in South America, there is a country called Suriname. Even here, you find a strong Indian influence even today. Then if you look at countries like Mauritius, Fiji, etc. Even there you have strong Indian communities and it's all because of the indentured labor system. So across the Caribbean region, India has very good diplomatic influence today because of the presence of the Indian community, right? So we have a cultural connection here with regard to our language, food, heritage, etc. And that is why India is influential. These tax havens like Cayman Islands, Bahamas and the others, they are used for money laundering. India is also a victim of money laundering. So many scamsters who have escaped from India, many fugitives, economic fugitives, they often find shelter in some of these countries. So it's in this context that one should be familiar with the Caribbean region and the jurisdictions and countries that are present over here. So now, if you go back to the question, we can easily answer the question, the country or territory which is not present in the Caribbean amongst the given options is Comoros. We saw in the map that Barbados, Cayman Islands, St. Kitts and Nevis, they're all part of the Caribbean. But Comoros is not part of it. Comoros is present in East Africa. It's present in the Indian Ocean. It's an Indian Ocean country and it is present in East Africa. So Comoros is the odd one out. So option C is the correct answer. So on this note, I would like to conclude this week's Places in News. I hope it has been a fruitful discussion. Do let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.